Hello viewers, subscribers, non-subscribers, and YouTube as a whole. Welcome back. And if this is your first time here, just welcome. This video is about a 2014 GMC Savannah 2500 work van. This video is part two in a multi-part series. In the first episode, we tackled some front end issues that included inner and outer tie rods, wheel bearings, and front shock absorbers. We left off with the scene you see right here where I go in for a quick gasket replacement for an oil cooler line. As soon as I'm done with this intro and recap, we're gonna roll around back, replace the rear shock absorbers, and I'm gonna crack the case cover on the rear differential. Then I will perform an inspection on the differential, cleaning, and a fluid refill. After that, there's a bonus pro bono repair. Then we're gonna move back to the front of the van and I'm going to perform a long awaited brake fluid exchange. If you happen to miss out on part one and wanna get yourself brought up to speed, just check the link in the video description down below. That being said, let's get to it. All right, we've migrated to the rear of this van. We're down below and the driver's rear and I'm gonna drop these shock absorbers out back here and replace those with new ones as well. You're gonna need an 18 and a 21 for this bottom bolt. And the duck a duck makes slight work of it. The uh, upper mounts are uh, held on with 13 millimeter bolts. I'll get those with my electric, electric ratchet. And a very long extension so I don't have to reach. show the condition of these I collapse this and I'm gonna release and it's just it's just sitting there so these are oh there it goes now it started but I can easily stop this by hand without much effort so these things are definitely worn and they are going away okay I've uh, unboxed the new ones you can see that they're held in a collapsed position by this uh, nylon strap what I'm gonna do is set up the bottom bolt first and then I will cut the strap and allow the shock to extend itself up to the top mount. And hopefully I can stop it as it aligns properly so I don't have to compress these by hand later to, uh, to get everything lined up. Cause I don't like to push brand new shocks together. It's uh, somewhat difficult. So you can see here, I've got the bottom bolt in and I'm just gonna reach up and give this a snip and we'll wash this absorber expand and move up towards the top there she goes okay sweet we got one bolt in and uh, numeral bolts all right i'll cut the rest of this nylon thingy out of here And all I've got to do is tighten everybody up. And this one is installed. Super easy. Uh oh, I'm out of battery. Okay, I'm back with a fresh battery. And a cross threaded bolt. Shit. Let's back that out and try again. There we go. Click. And again down below. 
a couple duck of ducks we'll handle this bottom bolt and we'll uh we'll return to warp speed for the passenger side shock complete okay let's move over to the other side and get this other one done uh oh check it out guys i uh i made a new friend hello grasshopper Oh, I don't think he's doing too well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put him outside. Yeah, he's missing his back legs. He can't do any hopping. Poor guy. Okay, we're back under the car. Uh, passenger side shock absorber is coming apart now in warp speed. Three, two, one, go. I usually don't like to operate at warp speed in most of my videos, but I have an extensive laundry list of repairs to get through on this van. And if I showed every single second in real time, it would take us hours to get through it. Now that these rear shocks are finished up, let's go ahead and pop the cover off this rear differential and see what's inside. This cover removal is fairly straightforward. I think it's uh, 14 bolts. Yeah, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 13, 14 or 16 bolts. And uh, they're all 13 millimeter. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all those with my electric ratchet. We will get behind this cover with a chisel or a pry bar, pop it loose, and uh, watch the schmoo dump out. Then I'll spray everything down, replace the gasket, reinstall the cover, and uh, refill this with fluid. After that, if you recall from part one, the customer mentioned they had a, a grinding noise coming from under the hood, which I determined to have been the AC compressor. So when I'm done down here, we're gonna roll back around to the front and I'm gonna discharge this system, pop that compressor out and replace it with a new unit. I'm also gonna pull the orifice tube out and inspect it for metal shavings. If I find any of those in there, I'm gonna install a new uh, AC condenser as well. So, like I said, this is gonna be a very interesting and diverse video. On these covers, I always leave one bolt in the top. That way when it breaks its uh, seal, the whole cover doesn't fly off and dump out the whole, whole three or four quarts of fluid. Because that makes a mess. Oh, and this is 14 bolts, not 16. I, I don't even think GM makes a 16 bolt rear. Silly me getting my numbers all screwed up. And it's already starting to, to drift dry here. Let me go fetch a pry bar and a, and a linear impact driver and we'll break the seal on this cover. I lied. Uh, we're gonna use a chisel instead of a pry bar. Just gonna get behind it right here and tap it tap this. Thanks Abe for the lingo. Tap it tap it off. Draining pretty good now. Okay, let's let it ride. Ew, is this a cork gasket? No, that's rubber, okay. I dislike cork as a gasket material. And while we're here, we can do a quick visual inspection on the internals. Let's see, what we're looking at here is the differential housing. This is the ring gear up front. In that hole is the pinion gear, which is connected to the drive shaft. We've got the axle side gears and the spider gears with the retaining pin. Wear on this looks pretty good. This is the inboard part of the left side axle, inboard part of the right side axle. You see there's one of the retaining clips right there. These are the end caps for the bearings that hold the differential in place. 
And uh, this thing looks pretty good in here. Let's see if I can reach that. There we go. Yeah, I'm turning one of the axle shafts now just to move the gears around to get it in inspection on their condition and everything's looking pretty good here. There's no pitting or chunks or teeth missing. All right, I'm gonna spray this out with some parts cleaner and then we'll reinstall this cover and put the, uh, put new fluid back in it. Ew, I need to clean this magnet out right here. That's got uh, lots of nasties on it. Again, this paste metal substance here is kind of normal. It's just uh, fine particles of steel that have worn away from the from the gear surfaces and potentially the bearing surfaces. Nothing really to fret about unless you find chunks in there. Uh, then you have uh, an indicator that something has catastrophically failed and you'd have to start uh, disassembling and digging deeper for a closer inspection. All right, so I'm downgrading to the nasty cloth towels to try to pick out the remainder of uh, this uh, metallic waste stuck on the magnet here. I see no sense in wasting my precious blue towels on, uh, on such a thing. I think that's about as good as it's gonna get. Yeah, the magnet looks fairly clean now and I got all the, all the debris out. Let's give this thing some spray. Get as much of the old blue out as we can. All right, that's looking good. It is now time to employ the use of my super scraper gasket scraper tool. It's uh, basically just a piece of aluminum and the end of it I believe is uh, carbide or tungsten carbide. I forget exactly but it's a very hard metal and it's machined true and flat and it's absolutely perfect for scraping away gas material. If I can find one I will put a link to these in uh, in the description down below if anybody's interested. Um, I haven't looked to see if they're available like through Amazon or something, but uh, I will, uh, I'll take a look after I'm done editing this video. And if, like I said, if I find one, I'll, I'll give you guys a link to it. I do know, do know that they come in multiple different sizes and I think this is the second to the smallest one. Uh, word of caution though, if you do get a hold of one of these and use it, be very careful on soft metals like aluminum because these uh, corners right here can dig into it and put a very large gouge in the surface. So these, these particular scrapers are not to be taken lightly. And I think that's why they call them the super scraper. But just the fact that the surface on it is true and flat makes removing gasket material a pleasant experience rather than a nightmare. Yeah, it just peels this stuff away like like nothing. Now, for the for the cover side of it, I'm just going to go ahead and use a regular sanding wheel because this cover is not exactly flat. It's got a bow to it on its sealing surface, and this particular tool is not ideal due to the convex shape of the uh, of the cover surface. And that looks good to me. Give it one more spray. I'm gonna go clean up the cover. I'll be right back. But before I go to 
Is this wheel all that off? I'm gonna clean off the rest of this goo and oil and residue. Gorgeous. Okay, I'm back with the freshly cleaned wipe down and gasket free cover. I'm also back with the new gasket. I think that's oriented properly. Yep. Uh, what I will do is I'll just stick a couple bolts in this and then set it in position. And we'll start all the bolts first and then start to torque them down. And no sealant is necessary. A lot of times folks won't use a gasket on these. They will just uh, stick a bunch of silicone on it, which is also acceptable. But when they're available, uh, I prefer to use a gasket. It's much less messy that way. All right, in the interest of time and seeing as how I've got days worth of work on this, I've uh, gone ahead and skipped ahead to having it finger tightened and installed all of all the bolts except for the one that fell out. Get it back in there, please. Of course, that's the hardest one to reach. Way up, you know, there. And I'm just gonna run through these with the, with the ratchet here and snug them all down. I'll use a crisscrossing star type pattern, just like any other multi-fastener surface. I'm getting noodle arm now. It's starting to hurt. Let's try it again on that one. There we go. And I think I got one more left right here. Okay, everybody's good. Time to pull this plug out and refill the lubricant. That's tight. I need to move for a better angle of the dangle here. Oh, wow. There we go. Yeah, that was in there a little bit. Cool. Okay, time to install the fluid. And what I've got available here, and what we ordered was Valvoline Full Sin, and it's a 7590 pure oil. I don't even know if you can see that because the lighting. Let's turn you that way some. There we go, 7590. Uh, not sponsored by Valvoline, I'm just letting you guys know what we're using here. And the way I get into this is pull the lid off, give it a stab to open up the paper that seals it. Put that funnel nozzle thing back on and chop it off. Now I can reach in and uh, give it a good squeeze. Fortunately, I've got the space here to get a good downward angle on these bottles sometimes the spare tires in the way and you've got to use some kind of a pump to fill everything up and I'll just continue to repeat this with the uh, other two or three bottles until we get an overflow right here at the bottom of this uh, fill fill hole all right second bottles going in I didn't bother cutting the second cap I just reused the one that I cut for the first bottle 
Now, seeing as I can't get out, get all of this fluid out, after I'm done with that third bottle, I will consolidate the three open bottles into one of the bottles, and that'll let me pour a little bit extra. Here comes bottle number three. It's leaking. Okay. Now all I've got to do is dump this back into the other two bottles and we will achieve one more full bottle, which makes for easy delivering. Okay, that one's spent. Here you can see, I don't know if you can, but uh, we're at about nine or 10 ounces left over just due to the angle. And now the new bottle is at 28 ounces, or the new used bottle. Prince. Ah, much, much better. Man, the trouble with these creepers is if you touch anything, you roll yourself away from your work. I've been doing that all day down here. There, nice and shiny. All right, let's come out of there. I got the trailer hitch for this fan in hand and one thing I noticed is they didn't get this torqued down all the way so I'm gonna go ahead and correct this uh, this is a no charge operation but um, I can't let somebody who tows roll out of here with something uh, going on like this because that's a uh, that's no bueno at all you see I have angry pliers and impact guns way too hard to for what it is I'm getting annoyed now come out why shot myself in the foot there didn't I
yeah, this thing's rusted in there pretty good. I win. Include my pro bono good deed for the day. Let's go put this back on the, back on their hitch so I don't forget, and then I can move on to the rest of what I was doing. There. All good in the hood. Okay, I think what I'm going to tackle next is the brake fluid exchange that I've been promising you guys forever, but have failed to deliver. So uh, I think we're gonna run through this fluid exchange and that's gonna be uh, putting me right about going home time here. So I'll probably close the video out at that point and uh, we'll figure out the process or procedure to do uh, part three in the morning when I come in. The first thing I'm gonna do is spray this off to get rid of all this dust and dirt here because I don't want to accidentally contaminate the brake system with any kind of foreign debris. Plus it looks better when it's nice and shiny. Real quick, wipe me down. There. The tool that I'm gonna use is this ball right here connected to an airline. And this airline will pass air through a Venturi, which will create a uh, lower pressure on the inside of this ball. Once negative pressure is achieved after this, uh, this Venturi is activated, that negative pressure will be translated through the hose and cause a suction right here. And then I can use that suction to pull the old fluid out. Once I pull the old fluid out of the master, out of the reservoir for the master, I'll refill it with clean fluid. And then I will come around to each corner and attach this to the, uh, the bleeder valves and uh, pull all the fluid through the lines and through the calipers until I have fresh fluid here. Thus replacing and exchanging all of the brake fluid without throughout the entire system. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start the machine. It's gonna be loud and annoying, but it'll be over soon. I tried to tuck it under the car so the sound isn't so uh, intense up here on top. 
There we go. Alright, that master cylinder is as empty as it's going to get. Now I'm going to refill it and then move to each individual brake caliper and pull the fluid through the system and out of the caliper bleeders. I don't know if I said it, but I can only do that after refilling the master cylinder. Pouring things, left-handed pouring things, I'm developing new skills. Okay, nice and full. Let's move around to the uh, first caliper. Now, there are some who would say that when bleeding breaks, you start from the farthest away and move towards the closest. For example, you do uh, right rear, left rear, right front, left front. However, when using a vacuuming device and not pumping the pedal to achieve fluid flow, I don't feel that that's actually relevant because effectively all that I'm doing is taking out old fluid and putting new fluid back in. And uh, I just don't see that um, since the front and rears are divided amongst themselves, uh, I don't see how any cross contamination could take place. Uh, therefore, the order that I do this in is um, inconsequential. Anyway, all that being said, let's fire the machine back up. Loud noises. See the level going down? It's slow, but it's happening. I'll check back in in a second. When doing this, you must exercise caution to not allow the master cylinder reservoir to run empty because then you'll be vacuuming air into the system, which makes this job about 10 times as uh, lengthy as it has to be because then you have to perform the scan tool automated bleed procedure on the ABS pump, not to mention suck a bunch of fluid in there to attempt to purge out all the air. It's, uh, it's not fun. So this isn't a set it and walk away kind of procedure. That being said, seeing how this is getting low, I'm gonna give her a top off. what we got looking pretty clean a little bit more and I will always close these bleeder valves while it's under pressure or I'm sorry under vacuum because if the system is under vacuum and then I take the vacuum away there's potential that air could enter the system so I will close this off right now then remove the valve or fitting so I should say okay I'll stick the dust cap back on and we'll move over to the next wheel there's my flow power on uh oh my hose came off oh there it is come here Go watch the reservoir and make sure we don't run super low. I can stop the uh, vacuum on the caliper at about halfway down or so. Few more seconds. In the meantime, I'll punch into the next bottle of fluid and head back for the, the top off. Looking good. Let's go ahead and close off this valve and we'll move back to the rear axle.
and cast back on. Okay, next corner. Okay, we're back on the, the right rear caliper. And this one's a little tougher because this brake line is kind of in the way. I'm gonna give it a bit of a tweak there. Machine is on. Open the valve, there we go. And we got fluid flowing. You can see it moves very quickly. Okay, we're at about 30 seconds, and I'm gonna do another refill. Close the right rear bleeder valve, and we'll move to the left rear, which will finish off this operation. All right, nice and tight. Click. And dust cap goes back on. One more and we're done with this. Alrighty, last but not least, we're at the left rear wheel. Got my cap. Let's get that sneaky wrench in there, breaker loose, and apply vacuum. You're not seeing air from inside of the system. You're seeing air that sneaks past the threads on the bleeder valve. And it's mixing with the fluid that's being pulled out. And again, we'll stand over here and monitor the, the fluid level. I'm gonna pause for a minute for the sake of video link. Be right back. Okay, this is nearly empty. Probably just uh, four or five ounces left, so I'll let this bleed down for a few more seconds. And we'll head over and close up the valve and disconnect everything. Oh, come here, wrench. There. And we'll snug it up like so. Cat back on. All good. And let's recheck the level. We are just above the max mark, so I'm gonna, I'll evacuate the rest of that right out of the master. Okay, rechecking the level. We're down at the minimum mark, I think. Let's refill this with what's left. And I will consider this operation complete. And we are right below the max line. So I'm calling that one good. Cap's going back on. And the letters aren't facing the right way. There, now we're good. All right, y'all, that concludes the procedure on how to exchange brake fluid. Uh, there's a couple different methods, uh, different types of machines. Some machines will actually apply a fluid feed to the reservoir under pressure. And so you have a vacuum on one side and a pressure on the other side. Uh, at this time, I'm not fortunate enough to have that machine. So I've got to do it uh, um, 
you call it the inexpensive way without the uh, very, very costly vacuum pressure machine. Either way, the results at the end are still the same. All the fluid gets exchanged and old fluid out and new fluid in. And that's really the point of the operation. Uh, however, I would like to say I, I do prefer the pressure bleeding method uh, more than, uh, than this one right here, but is what it is. Okay, that's gonna be a wrap for today. It's uh, 4.30, I'm done. I'm going home. Uh, like I said earlier, I've got a few more things to do tomorrow morning. So it looks like that's gonna be part three. Uh, one of those things is going to be to pull this doghouse out because uh, they want me to change these spark plugs and wires because we're at that 100,000 mile plus interval. So it looks like that's going to be tomorrow morning's project and uh, I'll see you guys then. All that being said, as always, I'd like to thank everyone here for watching this video. And of course, I need to remind you all to not forget to have a great day. See you guys later.